Ah, oh. Ah, <laughs> can't do it anymore. We are live. Welcome back. Ever since I had the flu, I hadn't been able to do that. We are live. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Blake Rafino. This is RU Series Sports. Hope all of you are making it a good one. We know that we are as well. Huge show in store for you tonight here is we got to go up to Fayetteville and break down the Hogs. You know, listen, um, it's time to make that stand. We talked about it last night. We'll talk about it again tonight. We'll preview the LSU series versus Arkansas here. Also, Jay Johnson going with a little bit of a different lineup. Now, it's different because the game starts tomorrow, which will be live on the postgame. Thursday night to break all of that down. But Lou Coleman not going on Thursday night against uh, Hagen Smith. So interesting call there. Gage jump still going on Saturday. Who starts game one versus Hagen Smith? Can the Tigers, are the Tigers playing a little bit of a different game here to try to take the series? Maybe Jay Johnson trying to switch some things up, move some things around so he can try to get his best to or get two wins in this series and upset the Arkansas Razorbacks. LSU Pro Day was today. We will talk about that, some things that we were hearing, uh, some chatter that was around with some of the NFL coaches, uh, Malay Neighbors, Brian Thomas, even some young cats that got a look today thanks to Jaden Daniels being there. All Almost all of the head coaches were at LSU's Pro Day instead of Tennessee's. We will talk about that. Going to go into Rafino's rants. I continue to see way too much slander about Jaden Daniels here. It is the biggest topic, really, that everybody wants to talk about. Some Rudy Poo named Joe. No, not my co-host on Rafino and Joe show. Some guy named Joe who apparently covers the NFL making a, a viral statement about Jaden Daniels. He also said the same thing about Joey B. To some extent, Jake Browning was better than him. Yeah, in his life. He, that dude is not even remotely close to Joe Burrow. So we'll talk a little bit about the Jaden Daniels. We talked about it last night, but it, it serves being resurfaced. I should have probably known last night that we were going to talk about this a lot today because people like to be stupid like they normally are. So we'll, we'll touch on that as well. We'll give an SEC weekend preview. Oh, by the way, it's still football season. By the way, it's still football season. No, Blake, it's not. Oh, well, yes, it is, because we got the spring. You know, we got to talk about that uh, as well. Let's get to some of your comments here to start off the show. Uh, Mark Allen says, let's go. Good to have you in here, Mark. Uh, Gerard Ledette, or Lede, maybe, depending on how you pronounce it, says 850 Niceville, Florida. Great work. Keep it going. Uh, Gerard, um, Niceville is that kind of that's kind of by Destin a little bit, isn't it? The eight five zero, kind of by uh, uh, not the Keys. Um, I forget what they call it over there, but Destin isn't Niceville close to to Destin? You gotta love it. Uh, Kid Mallory says, "Let's go from the two hundred five, Beham, Alabama." Oof. Yeesh. You got to be in that state. You know, it's funny, man. I don't know if I <laughs> – I think it's – this is a very hot take for you. I don't know if – we'll probably never like Alabama as LSU fans here. But, but, I feel like Saban not being there from an LSU perspective loses its luster a little bit. I got to be real. I can't hide it anymore. Maybe Kalen DeBoer can keep that rivalry going. But yes, I knew. See, I knew it was next to Destin. We've made that trip a couple of times. Uh, the Emerald Coast. That's right. The Emerald Coast. Actually, Wilk just sent this in. The Emerald Coast. Yes. The 850. Our good buddies down there, too, uh, Gerard, uh, Georgia Dog. They do a uh, radio show. Uh, on Saturdays called the uh, the Sportsman Show or something like that. You should give them a listen. Give them a call in, too. They're taking call-ins. Tell them Blake, uh, Blake Rufino sent you. Uh, Paul Sub Martin says, football season is restarting. UFL starts on Saturday and we will make the fall come a little bit quicker. I got to be real with you, Paul Sub. I don't want – I have not 
I have not sat down and watched but one UFL XFL game. That was when um God dog, I forget his name. Uh the PJ, the quarterback that went to Carolina, I forget his last name, but he went off in a game like that. I did I have seen clips like Derek Dillon from LSU has had some very big games in the XFL, UFL, whatever it is that they're calling it these days. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Anthony B. Saint says, Blake, will you be doing a show to break down the LSU-UCLA game before Saturday? Probably should. I probably should bring on Chessa or I should probably bring on somebody to do that. I will I will how about this Anthony? I'll make it a point to get to that. I I'll, I'll, I'll make it a point. Um we'll put some content out about that. Uh Penn Jones. Who Penn Jones? When's the last time y'all heard our, us play that? But says Blake, you think that there's any truth to Quinshawn Juckins transferring back to old piss? You know, I do think that there's a little bit of um, – I always feel like there's a little bit of truth to any rumor. You know, sometimes I, I don't think rumors just come out of the thin air. Sometimes – no, sometimes some of them are pretty uh, dumb. You know what I mean? Some of them are pretty dumb. But – no, I, 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 I don't necessarily believe uh, that I do. Uh, Chris Kimball says, I remember watching the XFL or, or XLSU. Let me restart. Chris says, I remember watching XLSU quarterback Alan Reicher. He's in the USFL. Um, how about that? How about that? Hum Bug says, in here to like and share. AYS, we're back. Uh, hope they that new set don't beat Blake out his chair like two nights ago. Yeah, man. Two nights ago, um, golf balls were f were falling down. You know, did get some new things in the new studio. We got the on-air thing right here, which we can't light up because the lighting in the room doesn't really work that well with it uh got the new the got another mini helmet got another mini helmet we got some more things got the little podcast thing your boy moving on up in the world so yes and my favorite book probably of all time right here uh the last hero about mickey mantle I've read it probably twice actually and I, I read this from as well and it was ron's book you know Got to get some spare reading in. I got to get more educated. That's what they tell me. All right, let's get rolling. Everybody do us a favor by hitting the like and share. Share to all those groups. If you're on Facebook, share to all of those social media pages. You're watching us, listening to us on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and notification bell. Wherever you are listening to podcast, rate, review, and subscribe. We greatly appreciate y'all doing that. No, that's even okay. <laughs> I, I'm getting flashbacks to the old the old granite wall there. It's a bad thing about having lines right behind you. You never know if they're even. Now I don't really have to worry about that in here. Just old, old, old habit. Got lots to discuss. Let's talk about our good friends at Bet Online. Tyler Alexander at LPT Realty, our good friends over at J and J Exterminating. Got lots to break down, got lots to talk about. We do that next. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way for you to wager on all of your favorite sports, contests, events, with the first-to-market odds in lines. Find reviews for all the news for each league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, college sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information for live in-game betting props and futures head on over to bet online today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet use our promo code believe 50 that's believe 50 b-l-e-a-v five zero to receive your 50 percent off welcome bonus on your first deposit that's betonline.ag betonline.ag 
He would sell your house and find you a new. Well, Tyler's the man, he's here for you. If you want to buy or sell, well, it's not too late. Dial 955-0008. Just call 955-0008. Y'all call Tyler, he'll shoot you straight. Louisiana is unique. The food, the festivals, even the bugs. No, not mud bugs. Unwanted bugs like these. The ones you don't want crawling in your home or business. Trust the shield from J&J Exterminating. We've been protecting Louisiana homes for over 50 years, earning the trust of our clients because we deliver what we promise. Protect your home from pests. Get the shield from J&J Exterminating. J J exterminating. Yeah. We're back. I want to make sure that this is correct, so I am going to search it because I did not I did not see it, but I want to make sure that it's true before we get rolling. So what you can be doing here is making sure that you're hitting the like and share and sharing all those groups and social media pages. Um, I saw that someone said that they thought that Dylan Cruz made the opening day line or, or opening day roster. Um, but I thought that he was starting out in double A. Uh, Dylan Cruz will be starting 2024 with the Harrisburg senators. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I, I, Somebody said that he's making that he was on the opening day roster. I did not think that they were going to do that to him. Uh, probably, hopefully, midseason, uh, Dylan Cruz is able to get up there uh, and make his major league debut along with Paul Skeens. By the way, just a little side note for all of you in here: I did get MLB The Show twenty four on PlayStation twenty four. I um, let my son pick the team for whatever reason. He has picked. Um, the San Francisco Giants, believe it or not. Paul Skeens is on the team, along with Dylan Cruz. He is also on the team. So is Trey Morgan, who is in the game. He is also on the team. K. Doty at second base. Jake Fraley in left field. Dylan Cruz in center field. And in right field, we got Michael Papirski. Behind the plate, we do have... Um, I mean, not Michael Propierski, Greg Dyman behind the plate, Michael Propierski. At third, we have Josh Smith. And at shortstop, we have Kramer Robertson. So I will just let you know that we have a full LSU squad in the house. We are undefeated at the current moment because I refuse to lose. And that is how this is going to go. This is how it's going to be. Dylan Cruz is batting off leadoff. And I do have Trey Morgan. In the two hole, K. Doty is in the three hole. Jake Fraley is in the four hole because uh, I like the 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 left, the, you know, the righty lefty righty lefty matchup like that. And then I just shuffle it as h- how I see fit throughout it. Greg Dykeman, uh is struggling right, right now, hitting two twenty two uh, on the season. Not a good start for old Greg Dykeman. We might need to find another LSU defender that can go out to right. That's all that I'm saying. It's been really tough on our our man, Greg Dightman. Let me know in the comments. Do you are did you get MLB the show? Give me a, a thumbs up button in the comments. Did you did you get MLB the show? Do you play it? Do you just trade for all LSU guys like me, who's just a lunatic and does it? I'm not going to go another game. I I can't see. Here's the thing, and people always ask me this question when I do this. Blake, what about Alex Bregman? What about the Brexter? Well, here's the problem that I have with the Brexter right now. I don't have enough cash to go and get him. I was able to get all the smaller time guys that didn't have massive contracts. Blake, what about Kevin Gaussman? What about Aaron Nola? The problem is I just don't have enough cash right now. I got to build it up to go get Nola, Gaussman, and Alex Bregman. So a very and much more complete LSU roster is on the way. You best believe it. By the way, Alex Lane. And Zach Hess are the two dudes in the bullpen. You're not here to talk about or listen to what I'm doing on a video game. You're actually 
probably here to listen to me talk about someone who in real life this past year made football look like a video game. That was Jaden Daniels. Listen, I said this last night. I'm going to repeat it. If you don't like it, get over it. <sighs> to me, Jaden Daniels is by far, without question, the best quarterback in this year's draft. I understand that a lot of people like Caleb. That is fine. I have my reasons for thinking that he should not be the number one overall pick. It's just for me, and I will continue to say this, there's not another quarterback or another player at LSU that I have seen that has been more critiqued, more looked at in a negative light, more than Jaden Daniels. Guys, today, if you want to even know the character of the young man, look at the jersey and the long sleeve that he wore for a teammate that was injured and battling brain cancer in Greg Brooks. The, the, the young man is just on a different playing field than everybody else. Mentally, physically, I think that he is. No one can run like him. I have told you my comp to him is someone that is a better throwing, a more accurate throwing Lamar Jackson. That's who I think that you're getting. I think you're getting a more polished thrower and more polished throwing Lamar Jackson. It's not Lamar Jackson's a two time MVP. The Rafino's rants comes into play when I see NFL guys who, by the way, that I just don't, I, I don't like mentally, I can't comprehend them. I love them. I do a podcast with one of them that is exploding. I just don't understand the nitpicking. Jane Daniels missed, he missed four passes today. The three passes that he missed was to a guy he never had thrown a football to a day in his life in CJ Daniels. Oh, by the way, he missed he missed Malik Neighbors on a hitch route. Oh, and his first throw. Okay. We've seen Jane Daniels have slow starts in the past we saw it a lot last season and once he got warmed up and get to going like the cool cali kid that he is that kid that he is that nickname he is otherworldly see with a guy like Jaden, what you have to do is you cannot look completely and solely and only at what he does with his arm even though i thought today even in the 65-yard pass that he threw to Chris Hilton Jr. in the back of the end zone was beautiful, and I think he's one of the better throwing quarterbacks in this, in this draft. He could be equal to all of those guys. He could be somewhat equal to Caleb Williams. He could be somewhat equal to Drake May. Maybe they have a little bit better arm, but Jaden's more accurate. De debate that all you want. But considering the fact that you can make the argument that he's up there with them throwing the football while being able to run the way that he does is what separates him from everybody else. Quite frankly, it's what separated him in 2022, by the way you won the SEC West that year, is because I just don't think people understand how critical it can be, how amazing that it is, that even though, yes, he's not doing what you like, throw the ball down the field, he's running the ball down the field and making the most electrifying plays that we've seen. Guys, there in the last decade, even more in the decade, I will say in the last 15 years so that I can get 2011 in here with this comparison, Tyron Matthew might be the most electrifying player, not named Joe Burrow, but just outright electrifying that we've seen at LSU. Guys, there's multiple plays that Jane Daniels made from a, a running standpoint, stopping on a dime, cutting the Florida game, running for 85 yards. He will always be forever. The legacy will be is that Jane Daniels at a place like LSU that over the last two decades has this is second in national championships behind Alabama. He is up there with being one of, if not the most electrifying. Now, like I've told you, the guy behind me remains at number one. It's not a slight at Jaden. There are lots of me that think that you could go 1A and 1B in a lot of those scenarios too. 
but I continue to see something, and this it bothers me. Guys, it, it legitimately bothers me as an LSU fan, as an LSU guy, that why can't you see and, and appreciate and think it is special to see Jane Daniels do what he did where you have just so many people putting down on him? Guys, of two viral tweets went out today, both of them negative about Jane Daniels. Now a lot went out that was positive. I'm not saying that there's not. I, I just, I, I cannot, I could not be a general manager of an NFL team and say to myself, even on the field, that I pass up Jane Daniels when the MVP of the National Football last, League last year was Lamar Jackson. If you're going to compare him, you can't pass on him. By the way, I think he's a better decision maker and a better thrower than the reigning, defending National Football League MVP. We overcomplicate things, man. In football and sports, we overcomplicate it. You know, I made this comparison last night. Do you want a guy that colors his nails pink, has a pink phone case, and wears pink lip gloss? Or do you want a guy that went to two very difficult situations and prospered? But like, what about his teammates throwing all the shit in a trash bag? You mean two guys, or at least one that I know of, that got kicked off of LSU's team for being a very crap human, by the way, came after my son on social media in the DMs, that was trashing his locker? Best player in this year's draft? I don't think it's remotely close. Let's talk about the rest of LSU Pro Day because it was massive. Man, Malik Neighbors, what a day. Talk about making yourself generational money in one day. A broad jump of 10-9. Guys, that's, that's elite. That's elite track stuff. By the way, he's a football player. A 42-inch vert running at 4 3 5, 40. I know you're going to say I'm biased. I think he's the best receiver in this class. I think if you would have, you know, what's crazy, you could make a comparison. 1,000% could make a comparison. In 2019, or we should probably say the 2020 draft, there was two guys that came out of LSU. One was Joe Burrow, who went one overall. And then Justin Jefferson, who went into the 20s. I don't think that NFL teams are going to make the same mistake again and not pa and teams just ultimately passing on Malik Neighbors. I think no matter what he does, he's in the top 10, barring that he does something stupid. Just stay at home, play Xbox, uh, hire you a, a, a chef. Hell, I'll pay for it if you need it. Pay, and you're going to pay me back when you get your contract. I'll pay a chef. Stay at home. Don't get into anything. Don't go to New Orleans on Mardi Gras, my guy. Okay? Um, but <laughs> I just think he's the best receiver in the league. It's interesting. He's got better numbers than, than Marv. And what people say is Marv is 6'4", is and he's got the name. He's got the bloodline. That's fine. That's fine. I just don't think he did it in a better conference. I don't think he did it about against better competition. I do think that there's a lot of this that if you just don't, if you take size out of it, which you can't really do, but if you did, from an athlete to athlete perspective, anything that Marvin Harrison Jr. can do, Malik can do just as well, if not better. And I don't think Marvin Harrison Jr. could line up right now in a 40-yard dash and win a 4-3-5. There are parts of me that believe that Marvin Harrison Jr. didn't test because he might not test well. I mean, I've never seen a player this scared of competition. Oh, he just wants to focus for his team, and he wants to focus for the new team that he's going to. No, I, think he, I don't think he would have tested better than Malik Neighbors. I think it's a strategy. 
I 100% believe it's a strategy or, or he's injured. Or he had surgery. Nobody will admit it. Nobody wants to talk about it because they want to keep it secret. Hush, hush. Or he had a surgery and nobody wants to talk about it. Remember your boy said that. Remember, remember Blake Rafino on March 27th, the year of our Lord, 2024. Remember you said that. Something's off with that. I don't think that his dad would allow him not to compete if he was 1,000% healthy. I don't believe it. So basically what I'm telling you here is, does Blake Rafino call bullshit? You're damn right I call bullshit. Wasn't the only people at um, the LSU Pro Day today. I thought that there were a couple guys, I thought even Omar Spates, who needed a big pro day, big pro day had one. I, I think that um, even even Makai Wingo, Charles Turner, even being there, you know, I think that, that was, that's great for them. Guys, I, I just don't think that Mason Smith had an I, – I think he had another really bad day. 21 benches, 21 uh, reps on the bench at 225, it's not good enough. Guys, by the way, just so we're throwing this out there, that's only six more than Malik Neighbors. Six. Malik Neighbors had 15. Six for Mason Smith. Mason's going to get drafted. I do think that he'll be a third, fourth round pick. I don't think he can get into the second. He's got high potential. Maybe he even can go into the second. I don't know. But, man, I just, I got to tell you, I wish the kid would have come back. He wasn't ready. And every time I feel like he goes out there, he looks good in drills. He's a physical freak. He just isn't ready. And I hate that for him. I wish that he would have gotten better advisement. I know that he told Wilson Alexander, I believe, is who did the um, – the story on him, I, I do believe that um, he told Wilson, and if I'm wrong on who did the story, I apologize. Don't kill me on it. Um, that he just didn't know who the D-line coach was. That's why he left. I also call BS on that. I also 1,000% call BS on that. So, wish he would have come back. He should have come back. He needed to come back, but... It is what it is. All in all, here's what I want to end with. Guys, there were three times today that I thought in the pro day there was something of big significance. The first of it was is that Jane Daniels said, I'm not throwing at the combine. I, now that there's a new rule where I can throw at a pro day with other guys, meaning guys like Mason Taylor, who, by the way, Dan Quinn – the new head coach of the Washington Commanders. I don't know if you saw this, but during the day today, Dan Quinn and Mason Taylor were having extended conversations. That kind of thing happens with head coaches because of what Jane Daniels did. Last year, Kayshawn Booty did it with Jane Daniels. Ironically, remember all the stuff that came out with New England and Bill Belichick and Jane Daniels. Ironically, he, he, Jane Daniels could actually have fallen to or go to New England. It's a great day for guys like Chris Hilton. It's a great day for a guy like Noah Kane. It's a great day for a guy um, like C.J. Daniels, Mason Taylor. All of those guys, guys, it was packed in there. It's the most loaded I, 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 somebody told me that the last time that a pro day was this loaded with NFL scouts, head coaches, GMs, and talent was um, either the 2011 year. He said he said that he thought that every he he thought that all 32 head coaches though, um, and what was it, um, Jamarcus's year? I think he said, guys, y'all heard y'all heard the phone call. What did he say? J right. So Jamarcus, yeah, that was the McShay one. That was the McShay one. So when McShay said it was the best pro day he had ever saw. 
I'm I'm just so proud, man. Like, uh, not like a proud dad, but I'm just so proud of of this school, this university. I thought it was a great day. You had a lot of eyeballs there. This goes a long way in recruiting. The viral stuff that happened with Malik Neighbors today. Brian Thomas Jr. had another big day. I'm just excited that these guys can move on. It puts you know other guys on a pedestal too that might have not gotten that platform. It's just really great for. Um, Great for LSU. All right, let's do this. Um, we do need to talk about the upcoming Arkansas um, series that starts tomorrow. We'll be live on the post game on that one. So let's do this. Excuse me. Let's do this. Let's talk about our good friends over the Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com, good friend Carol Falls. Uh, let's just get to a break and we'll recap or we'll come back. We'll recap and we'll, or not recap. We'll preview, excuse me, on Arkansas. We'll do that next. Stay with us. By the Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com. Whether you've been injured in an accident, you're preparing for a future with your estate planning, you're getting ready to close in on a real estate deal, or you're about to welcome a new addition through adoption into your family, or you're facing criminal charges, you need very experienced attorneys, and that is what the Drake Williams Law Firm will be able to do for you in navigating the legal system. The door to their cozy office in historic downtown Ponchatoula has been open since 1981. They have helped thousands and thousands of Louisiana families and individuals win cases, close on real estate deals, and regain that peace of mind. Their lawyers over at the Drake Williams Law Firm, Ernie Drake III, Ryan J. Williams, and Summer Vignair are very determined, compassionate, and dedicated to their craft. It's the Drake Williams Law Firm, drakewilliamslawfirm.com. Give them a call today at 985-386-7600. Tell them your good friend Blake Rafino at AYS sent you on by. Guys, you might know my good friend Carol Falls and all the great service that he provides over at State Farm. He is your good neighbor after all. But did you know State Farm has surprisingly great rates as well? Along with a great neighbor service, State Farm agent Carol Falls has surprisingly great rates for everyone inside the state of Louisiana. So call him today at 985-395-4300, 985-395-4300 for all of those surprisingly great rates on auto, home, and life insurance needs. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there and individual premiums will vary by customer, all applicants subject to the State Farm underwriting requirements. Bayou Daiquiri's at Bayou Bowl and Go is owned and operated locally by Steve and Lisa Bean. You can find them at 1512 North Highway 190 in Covington, Louisiana. That's 1512 North Highway 190 in Covington. The North Shore's first crawfish drive through is about to step it up another notch by bringing you drive through daiquiris as well. You can call in your order today at 985-888-1914. 985-888-1914. Because you know what? Daiquiris and crawfish. It's a Louisiana thing. J&J has protected Louisiana homes and businesses for over 60 years. We call them today, make the pets go away. J&J exterminating. Yeah. Still, I'm going to keep saying it. I think that the number one person that should hear that sound in April's draft is Jaden Daniels, but what do I know? All right. Let's preview this Arkansas series, ladies and gentlemen. So it was announced today that Jay Johnson isn't actually making any changes. What do I mean? Luke Holman will go on Friday, but not against Hagen Smith because the series starts tomorrow on Thursday. Normally what you have is obviously what, Arkansas is doing your ace goes on the game one yada 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 but Jay has announced or it's been announced that Luke Holman will go on Friday and Gage Jump will go on Saturday clearly I do think that this is for two reasons number one I do think Luke Holman he his pitch count was a little bit elevated um, more than maybe it was in in previous starts so was Gage Jumps maybe they just don't want to they just want they really want to give him that next that other days of rest I don't think that that's true, though. I, I don't think that that is the case. What I think is the case here is because of what Arkansas has on Friday going with Hagen Smith. So Hagen Smith is the bona fide superstar for the Arkansas Razorbacks baseball team. 
he's been so good, guys, that I don't think that people have realized. You know, like this time last year, Paul Skeens throwing 102. A lot of people knew about him. He was the number one player in the portal, so everybody knew him. And a lot of people, and obviously baseball fans know who Hagen Smith is. I just don't know if they realize how good of a season that he's had. 29 innings pitch. He's only given up 11 hits. Say that again. He's had 29 innings, only given up 11 hits. By the way, of those 11 hits that he's given up so far this year, four of them came in game one, inning one. So from the beginning of the season until now, he's only given up six hits on the entire year. It's a little bit crazy there. He's only given up four runs. Also, what he gave up in the beginning of the year, all of them earned. 10 walks, 62 strikeouts, which actually leads the SEC. And batters are hitting 116 against him. He has a 1.24 ERA. What I think Jay's doing here, I'm not saying that Jay is conceding game one. I, 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 I refuse to believe because of how big of a competitor Jay Johnson is, I don't think he's conceding. I think he's trying to play strategy. What, is the, what does this ultimately tell me? I think that Jay is going to, and without a shadow of a doubt, go for games two and three because he thinks that he has a better chance, especially after two times last year when you faced Hagen Smith and you weren't able to get to him, you weren't able to hit off of him. I don't want to say that you're conceding because I do think that you're going into the game to try to win. So who's going to start tomorrow? Who's going to be the guy on the mound tomorrow? Here's, a, here's who I think it is. I have no idea. Who do you trust the most? Not name Thatcher Hurd. And Thatcher's not going to go then anyway. I, I, Kate, I, I don't know. I, I think it's my point. Maybe you try to go. Johnny Holstaff, maybe Javen Coleman starts it off. I don't know. But it's not going to matter anyway because if you're not able to get to Hagen Smith and be the team that finally gets to him and get some retribution for what happened to you last year, guys, it's going to be a very, very long day. It's going to feel like it is going to feel like what everybody felt like last year once Paul Skeens was on the mound. When you're just, quite honestly, getting deed down. Massive pause. But it's the truth. <sighs> Guys, I don't think you can win tomorrow, though. I, I, I legitimately don't. I think that he's that good. Now, that's me projecting. Anything can happen. Let me just say this. Anything can happen in baseball. Anything can happen to baseball. So I'm not saying it's impossible because clearly it's possible that tomorrow you come out here and you come guns a blazing. You come out blasting and you're able to win on Friday. But man, I think what Jay to some extent is saying, listen, there's we're going to go and compete. We're going to do everything we can to win game one. But if we leave home in, on Friday and we leave jump on Saturday, we could have a potential where, look, Malina is going uh, this weekend, and you got Tiger that's going as well. So, just to give you an idea, Will McIntyre, who has been the best reliever for the Arkansas Razorbacks, I could make the argument is their second best pitcher. He's probably going to be the guy that comes after Hagen Smith. He's got 11 appearances on the year. There's a high probability that you see him more than once this weekend. He has 11 games. He's got three shutouts. He's got two saves. He also is only one-third inning away from matching Hagen Smith in innings pitched. He's a reliever, okay? He has 32 strikeouts. He has been a little bit able to – You've been teams have been able to get to him a little bit more than Hagen Smith. He's got 172 batting average against – but that's who you're going to see. And 
there's parts of me that wonders if Jay, if Will McIntyre is able to go on Thursday and you see Hagen Smith and McIntyre, I guess that they believe that Malina is somebody that they could get to more than anybody else who's also going to be their starter. I don't want to say that, that Jay is giving up. It, it does feel a little bit like that there's a part. So the lineup, just so in case, I don't know if I remember reading this off, but Hagen Smith goes on Thursday for Arkansas. Uh, Mason Malina on Saturday, who will face Luke Holman, will go on Friday. Mason Malina is 3-0. He's got a 2.57 ERA. He's had 28 innings pitched. He's given up a lot of walks, 15, inning walk, 15 walks in that 28 innings with 47 strikeouts, and then Brady Tiger is going to go on Saturday. So a really good matchup on Saturday, of, on Thursday and Friday, excuse me. I mean, on Friday and Saturday. I was right the first time. Um, so we'll see. I think that that's a strategy. Do you go with a Griffin Herring? Do you, you know, who comes out, you know, out of the mound? I, I don't know. I, I legitimately, I would be giving you guesses. I have, a, I actually asked today and was told, burr, 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 we don't know. That's what I was told. Talk to somebody up there today, closer. I, I, I'm going to leave that alone. But I don't know if they, I think they have a really strong idea. I think they've told the guy by now who's going to be going tomorrow. Like, hey, man, we're, we're going to you. Maybe they tell him in the morning. But we've seen nasty Nate Ackenhausen. Okay. Um, get that phone call before. We've seen Jay go to nasty Nate Ackenhausen when he's needed a start in the College World Series. I know that he threw on Saturday. Is he rested enough? I, I don't know. I, I do not know. But you've gone to him before. Do you go back to him and try to get him a start again? I don't know. But I do, I probably I would not be surprised if you go if you went with a lefty. And what's even more interesting is I don't know when Jay's gonna let it be announced that who he's going with. You know, he he plays things very close to the jest. I, I remember last year, remember in game three versus Florida in the College World Series in the National Championship finale, um, the all day, all everybody kept speculating. All everybody kept speculating. There's just no way you don't go to Skeens. I think every, what we know is, is that Skeens is going to come into the game, but he's probably not going to start. He's, Jay's going to give him the ball. And – which Jay was going to do that. I mean, candidly, that is what Jay was going to do. But he told Thatcher Heard the morning of, hey, man, let's roll. And then you know the story. He didn't have to go to anybody else. Guys, this is one of the best pitching staffs in the country. Not, not, the, not the conference, the country. They have multiple guys that have seen 10 appearances, nine appearances, and Stone uh, Helet, okay, you also have Jake Faudry, uh, excuse me, Cody Frank, excuse me, that has 10 appearances. Guys, all of those dudes have a sub-3 ERA or less. They are not getting hit. They are not giving up runs. This pitching staff as a, as a unit, okay, as a unit, has a total of a 2.50 ERA. They don't give up runs. And it doesn't bode well when you've been struggling at the plate. When you get runners on, this is why on the post game last night I was so pissed off. It's because runs are going to be so, so, so crucial this weekend that you're gonna have you're gonna have to probably play a little small ball. If things aren't going your way, you're probably going to have to play some 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 small ball. If you get runners on and you get in a first and third, you're going to have to do a delay steal, get in a pickle, treat, see if you can try to get the runner home from third. You're going to have to do everything you can to generate runs. But last weekend, I thought it was going to be more of an offensive onslaught, even though game three was for Florida. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I mean, but you would just be the first team 
to go against a team who, quite honestly, I mean, really and truthfully, the worst guy, I mean, the guy, a guy that you could actually see, Cooper Dosette, he has six appearances. He's got six three five ERA. Guys, we have multiple dudes in our in our pen that have that. Multiples. He would actually probably not be a bad guy in our bullpen, considering the guys how some of the guys have looked here. So we'll see, man. Um, I do like the matchup between Holman and Malina. I think it gives it gives Holman a fighting chance to get a win uh, on Friday. And then we'll see what we get from Gage Jump. But by the way, Brady Tiger, man, is not guys. He was, if I'm not mistaken, he was a transfer. Um, or was it Malina? I forget one of the two. One of them were was transferred last year. I, I think was Texas, Texas Ace. Was that Malina? Guys, can we bean count that? Who was was it Malina or Tiger that was the uh Texas Tech uh transfer? I actually probably can look it up here. I knew it was one of the two. Yeah, it was Mason Malina, the lefty. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. You know what's bad about having two children? Is when they listen to jingles, they get stuck in my head. Like there's one song of like, Johnny, Johnny, yes, Papa, eating sugar, no, Papa, telling lies, no, Papa, open your mouth, ha, ha, ha. Why do I have that in my head? I'm in the middle of the show, talking to you, haven't let up, we've been talking about sports the entire time, and I got a stupid jingle in my head. I mean, what in the Rudy Poo is that? But I'm glad that that's the song now that I have two children. Remember um, back in the day, I used to come on here and sing, I'm in love with a stripper. She bob and she rolling, she rolling. She bob and that pole. And see, we, we've graduated from that. We've educated ourselves uh, up on that. All right, let's get to a couple of comments here. Uh, see, Gary Williams knows exactly what I'm talking about. Coco Melon. Coco Melon. Dads know, man. Dads know it sticks in your head all day long. Pause. It, 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 it. What's another one? Oh, God. The wheels on the bus. Uh, my little daughter, Jewel, she, um, her favorite thing in the wheels on the bus when she's singing it is when they go all through the town, she goes, you'll say all through and everybody's got to pause because then she'll go down. It's the cutest freaking thing ever, dude. <laughs> Sherry Berry, no, Papa. Open your mouth. Ha, uh, uh, ha, uh. ha. I know it gets, it's probably massive pa Paul's worthy. Uh, Carlton Landry with the best uh, 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 comment of the night. He says, at least it's not Baby Shark. Thank God. Thank God. All right. Let's talk about some of these guys that we're going to see uh, at, uh, at the plate this weekend for Arkansas. Peyton Holt is the best hitter for Arkansas. He's got a 327 ERA. He's played in 18 games, only started 13. He's got 16 hits, six RBIs, no home runs. Um, I'm not a thousand percent sure of his status here, but Ben McLaughlin, um, Ben McLaughlin, 316. Um, Jared Sprague lot, he's hitting 323. Peyton Stovall, 310. Uh, Nolan Souza. 308 Kendall Diggs, who actually wasn't was really good last year against you. He's starting it in all 23 games. Him and Oloi uh, are the only two that have done that. Guys, they have 
seven dudes that hit 275 or above. They're not going to hit for a lot of power necessarily. They do uh, have thir uh, 33 home runs on the year, but you do have, uh, I mean, nobody really in their lineup. I, I mean, maybe Kendall Diggs. I, I mean, they're just not a power hitting team, but they are going to get timely hits. They're going to hit balls in the gap. They're going to hit the ball in really good holes, Pauls. They're going to hit, but they're going to hit ground balls into any shifts. They're a very well round team. They are not going to hit for power. They are more going to hit for average. They're a scrappy. No, you know what they are? They're an Arkansas team. Those teams that Arkansas had, now sometimes they had guys like, what was it, Bellinger that went there? But they've had guys that have had power before. Um, but nevertheless, they're going to hit for a high average. They're going to steal some bases. Like I, I look at the stolen bases that they have uh, on the year. They they don't have a lot. Like one dude just doesn't have a lot. But guys, I mean, I, I look at Aloy. He's got three. I look at Diggs. He's got three. I look at Levich. He's got one. Uh, Peyton Holt had three. Really, really good team. At spraying the ball all over the field. Um, I do think you can have some success on them. I 100% I, I believe that you can have some success against them and do some really good things. I think Friday night you're going to be fine. I think Saturday night you're going to be fine. I do think that this could be a close series. I just don't know if you have enough to win it. Let me give you my pick now. And I've, I've said it all week, so it's not really, really uh, – <sighs> newsworthy because I've said this before guys I just don't know if you can win this weekend I I'm not confident that you can um I don't know if you can win the series I'm going I am trying to reverse jinx this in year one of Jay Johnson I said like a fool that I just don't see a scenario and this was in 22 I did not see a scenario where um, Jay Johnson and his club could go up to Vandy, go up to Nashville and win that series, much less when they swept it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to try to reverse jinx this because I did that then. I said LSU was going to get swept against Vandy. Biggest mistake that I had. Probably the most off thing that I had. And just continues to go that this is baseball. I hope that LSU pulls out the series. I think that they can pull out the series. I'm not saying that they can't. I just don't know if I can see it. Like, you can sit here and try to convince me um, that they that they will. And I think that a lot of you, if you try, would make a lot of good points. I just don't I, – I, I don't think that this staff that you're going up against is good for a team that – as just the overall unit is struggling at the plate. God, I hope I'm wrong. Excuse me. God, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> Joseph Buchanan. On YouTube says, gee, thanks. Now I will have nightmares of songs that never end in my head. I'm just telling you, man, that's that's what it's like being a dad in, in, in 2024. It's what it's like being a, a, a two-year-old or one-year-old and a four-year-old's dad. It's a hoot, as they say. All right, let's get rolling. Sherry Berry says, it's okay if you pick against LSU because it always backfires when you do. See, she remembers, Sherry Berry remembers every single time I pick against LSU. Every time LSU wins the series in baseball. Every time I pick against them in football, they historically win. Maybe I should just always pick this LSU at this point. I'm being facetious. It doesn't always happen. Um, 
So, yeah. We'll see. Uh, Lucas A. Bear with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Lucas, so much. He says, LSU will win tomorrow. Mm. Lucas, how about this? If LSU wins tomorrow, I hope that I get to do this. I hope a thousand percent I get to do this. Lucas, if LSU wins tomorrow, the two dollars you sent here, I'll send you it right back. <laughs> I'll get your Venmo account. I'll send it right back to you. I'm I'm praying to spend money. I I hope I get to sp- to send. Lucas A. Bear, two dollars because LSU went. And look, he's given a score three to two. Well, let me ask you this, Lucas. Who do you think starts tomorrow since Luke Holman is not? And who do you who do you think? Because if you do that, that means somebody really ste- stepped up and performed at a very, very high level. Uh Ross. Barkhurst says, we didn't feel the shoes of Dugas and the Cajun, ouch, my back, uh, Bambino. That is true. That is true. Uh, Lucas says, bet I got LSU 5-3. to three. Who wins you the game? Who is the starting pitcher that wins you the game? Because I think that's what all of us really want to know about. If this team explodes explodes offensively, I, I don't know if um, – would we really be shocked if this team scores a lot of runs tomorrow? Maybe we would because it's off of Hagen Smith and he's 2-0 and o against you and he's been really good, maybe. But you would probably lean to, well, we had the talent. We knew that they could do it. And it just, just came off the best pitcher in America. You just wouldn't be so- shocked. Um, Ga- I got Gage Jump and Gidry save. Um, Lucas, Gage Jump is going on Saturday, so he's not going tomorrow. He's not going tomorrow. Aaron Miller says he's got nasty Nate Ackenhausen. <sighs> Roland Gardner! <laughs> but the big doggy what a great movie that is rookie of the year what a fantastic movie damn henry you can play for the cubs i must have watched that movie a thousand times for a thousand and one nobody has watched rookie of the year more than i have i think it's physically impossible It's physically impossible. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Post game. See you there. Peace.